Good morning, or depending when you're listening to this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always taught how to voice radio, and today I'm using that voice to tell you all about the lovely whale or deck, which came all so close to winning US Nationals this past weekend, falling in the final to probably the best player the game has ever seen in an absolute nail-biter. And it's a very unusual deck, so I thought I would make a quick little video showing you how the deck works, comparing it to some similar decks that we've seen in the past, and then looking at whether it is going to hang around in the future, or whether this really was a bit of a one-hit wonder taking advantage of an unprepared metagame. So first things first, let's take a look at the Waylord card itself. Now, there are three important parts of this card. One is the weakness, but given that this past weekend there were no viable grass decks, I'm going to ignore the weakness and say that the only relevant parts of this card are the HP and the water typing. The water typing is so that it can use rough seas, which we'll get to in a little bit. The... HP is because 250 HP is actually the largest HP in the game, even more so than any Mega EXs. You've got some Mega EXs like Groudon and Kyogre which get up to 240 HP, and that is about the highest you can get, except for Waylord, which gets up to 250 HP. And the weird thing about this deck is, it uses no energy cards whatsoever. There are no energy cards in this deck whatsoever. It just uses your, obviously, you've got your Waylord. The only other Pokemon it uses is Suicune. And the reason it uses Suicune is quite simply because it is, although it doesn't have the HP of Waylord, it has a paltry 100 HP, it has its safeguard ability. And the safeguard ability allows it to have immunity from attacks from EX Pokemon. So if you've got the Waylord against an EX deck, and we saw this by one of the senior players who actually faced down a Manectric deck in, it was either top four or top eight of this past weekend. He went on to become the seniors national champion, and he ended up winning a couple of games just by putting a Suicune out and going, oh, oh, you can't knock out my Suicune. Gutted. And... They are the only two Pokemon in the deck. Suicune is there because even though it's got a lower HP, if you're playing against an EX Heavy or occasionally, like I've just mentioned, an EX Filled deck that cannot knock out one of these Safeguard Pokemon, then he's even better than Waylord. So if it doesn't use energy, what cards does it use? Well, essentially, all of the cards it uses fit into two basic categories, which I am going to call Healing and Disruption. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire deck list of this deck. Pokemon have actually put the entire deck list up on Pokemon.com forward slash nationals. So if you want to go over and check the list out in full, you can. I'm here to explain the deck to you and tell you how it works. Now, in terms of healing cards, we've got Max Potion, which allows you to entirely heal a Pokemon. Now, you have to discard all of your energy to do so. But, of course, that's not a problem when you're playing no energy. You get to heal your entire Pokemon. And remember, it's got 250 HP. We've got Cassius that allows you to shuffle it into your deck, or AZ that allows you to pick it up, although AZ, bit of a downside because it makes you discard cards attached to it, which is only really a hard charm here, but losing a hard charms can be a problem. We've got Rough Seas, an amazing stadium that allows you to heal 30 HP every turn from each of your water Pokemon, and Waylord and Suicune are both water Pokemon. And this is one of the things that makes the deck so good. Firstly, you've got Waylord's almost ludicrous 250 HP, and secondly, you have got this Rough Seas which heals 30 damage per turn. So if your opponent is, you know, doing 80 damage, well, Hard Charm brings it down to 60 damage, and then Rough Seas brings it down to 30. 30 damage. Speaking of Hard Charm, this is the only Pokemon tool you really want to play in this deck, and it does exactly what Eevee Light used to do for basic Pokemon. It reduces attacks by 20 damage. And all of these together essentially stop your opponent ever taking prizes. You've got Suicune, which stops your opponent essentially attacking if they're in EX. You've got your ridiculous HP on Waylord, and then you combine that with your Max Potion, your Cassius, your AZ, your Rough Seas, and your Hard Charm to really stop your opponent ever taking prizes. Hard Charm and Rough Seas really really limit the amount of damage your opponent can do and whenever they do too much you just stick down your Cassius, your AZ or your Max Potion to heal it completely. The other facet of this deck is your disruption. You've got Team Flare Grunt which allows you to discard an energy off your opponent's active Pokemon. 
You've got Zerasic, which allows you to discard a Pokemon tool or a special energy from any of your opponent's Pokemon. So obviously you would use Zerasic to get rid of things like Double Colorless and Strong Energy, and you try and save Team Flare Grunt to get rid of basic energy. You're also probably going to be playing Enhanced Hammer, which is a trainer card that allows you to get rid of special energy. You would use Lissandra to bring up bench Pokemon, and as you're already getting rid of all of their energy with the cards I've just mentioned, you would try and use Lissandra to pull something into the active that had a high retreat cost, so your opponent would have to waste more resources, and indeed more energy a lot of the time, to get it out of the active to try and keep attacking. Now, one card which it deck does play, which has hardly seen any play whatsoever, despite having been released quite a while ago, is the supporter card Hue. Now, Hue essentially makes both players have five cards in their hand. If you've got less than five, you draw until you've got five, and if you've got more than five, you discard. And this is a very important card for this deck, because Waylord attempts to win by decking your opponent out. You sit there, they can't take six prizes, they deck out, and one of the fundamental rules of the Pokemon game is, if you cannot draw a card at the beginning of your turn, you lose. Nice and simple. So you basically want to make sure that your opponent gets to that stage. And what smart players can do against this Waylord deck is just keep drawing cards, drawing cards, drawing cards, and using cards like Colrus, where you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw the amount of bench Pokemon there are, or N, both players shuffle in their deck cards into their deck and draw the amount of prizes they've got left so they can go from you know if there's four bench pokemon out they get a card of a hand of 35 cards they play a chorus four pokemon on both players benches and they go from a 35 card hand to four giving themselves 31 more turns of drawing with hue your opponent's got a 35 card hand you play a hue and they discard 30 cards now that's a fairly extreme example but it basically reduces the possibility of your opponent drawing all of their cards and then just shuffling them back in and drawing lots of turns and that's how this deck works it's a brilliantly constructed very intelligent deck which works by essentially stopping your opponent playing with your disruption cards and then making them deck out you think oh hang on a second what if they shuffle all their cards back in so you play a hue to get around that you play cards like silent lab just to slow them down stop them using cards like um caldeo's rush in so that they can switch into the active and then retreat essentially giving them an automatic switch so they can always put the bench pokemon they want active or stopping them drawing cards using shaman you play well the second place that uh list at nationals played a single trick shovel which basically forced your opponent to discard one card it's a fun little card it's only a one-off in the deck that got second at nationals but sometimes you might discard one of your opponent's four dces or their computer search and it becomes a big card and then you use cards like vs seeker and dowsing machine which allow you to reuse a lot of these cards vs seeker allows you to reuse a supporter and dowsing machine allows you to reuse any card train a card that you like and then essentially you use these cards to be able to go ahead and just reuse all of your disruption cards and make sure your opponent decks out now Lissandra's trump card used to essentially be a fail safe here this deck was not viable before Lissandra's trump card was banned see my previous video about this if you want more information about that ban it's easily found on my youtube channel and essentially, this wouldn't work because the Saunders Trump card made both players shuffle their discard piles into their deck and almost made it impossible to actually deck out. No, it's not so anymore, and that's how Waylord has risen to prominence. So this got me thinking, are there any similar decks that have come around with these cards in the past? And for newer players, this might be a bit of a history lesson. I basically put this deck into two categories. Firstly... Decks that don't use energy. And I've remembered two. Now, the first is my Snorlax deck. I call it my Snorlax deck. It wasn't my deck. That's a lie. But you can see it in action on my YouTube channel, which is what I was getting at. I think there's a fun deck game I played against a Blastoise deck on PTCGO. So again, if you search through my YouTube channel, you'll find my Snorlax deck very quickly. Let me make it very clear. I did not originate this idea. It wasn't my idea, but I did appropriate it and play with it for a while. 
But even the Snorlax deck, you still took prizes. For the Snorlax deck, essentially, you would use Snorlax ability to stop your opponent retreating, you would keep them in the active, and you would play Hypnotoxic Laser to stop your opponent essentially doing anything. You'd get rid of all of their energy in the same way that this Whale Lord deck does, and then you would let them die of poison, and you would win very long, slow games while your opponent died of poison and had no energy. The other deck I can think of that played no energy whatsoever was a Gyarados deck. Now, some of you might not remember this, because this is a few years ago now. But what this Gyarados deck basically did, it was a Gyarados that came out in the Stormfront expansion. And if you have a look at the card here, there's a kind of a blank space where the energy cost would be. Now, we don't see this in cards anymore, but that basically designated a free attack. An attack for which there was no attack cost. And you can see there, 30 damage times the number of Magikarp in your discard pile. So you would discard 3 Magikarp, evolve the 4th into Gyarados, and do 90 damage per turn. Now, I, I'm not going to go into the nuances of how this worked, but there was broken time space back in the day which allowed you to evolve Gyarados straight away. Rare Candy, I believe, also worked at the time to evolve you could just go Magikarp, Rare Candy, Gyarados. Doesn't work like that anymore, but it used to back in the day. And there were all kind of cards like Pokemon Rescue, etc., which allowed you to get your Magikarp back from the discard pile. And you could use Expert Bout to increase the damage done by 20. And back then, Pokemon had lower HPs. So this was a very successful deck. I believe there was a French chap that made top 8 at Worlds with Gyarados. That was its kind of, its heyday, if you will. So they are some cards that used to use no energy. But even both of those cards relied on taking prizes. Now, in terms of decking out, this is also a tactic which has been used in the past. And back in Noble Victories, the Durant card was released, whereby, for one energy, you could discard one card from your opponent's deck for every Durant you had in play. So in theory, you would again use cards like Crushing Hammer and Enhanced Hammer to get rid of their energy, while you discarded four cards per turn in an ideal situation, using Durant. But not, But again... This Durant deck played energy. So, on the one hand, you've got cards in the past like Snorlax and Gyarados, which didn't play energy but took prizes. And you've got the Durant deck, which didn't take prizes but did have energy. I think this Whale or deck might be entirely unique in terms of not taking prizes and not playing energy. Just sitting there while your opponent cannot KO you. So, that brings me to the final question I want to address in this little short video today. How do you beat it? Well, there's a couple of ways. One thing which has been suggested by many people is Bunnelby, although a lot of people have said this, in my opinion, wrong. What some people have said with Bunnelby is, we'll use the first attack. You get Bunnelby out, use one energy, and you can borrow, making your opponent discard the top card of their deck. And, of course, the Omega Barrage Ancient Trait allows Bunnelby to attack twice. So you can burrow twice per turn, and the Waylord will deck out before you. One thing that other people have suggested, and this is by far my favourite tactic with Bunnelby, is actually using the second attack, Rotatilla. Shuffle a card from your discard pile into your deck. And again, you can do this both, you can do this twice per turn. And you can do this with energy. Now, if you are recycling two energy per turn, and your opponent is getting rid of one energy per turn, doesn't take a genius to figure out that you are never going to run out of energy. Also, if you are recycling two cards into your deck per turn, you are never going to deck out. And if you recycle energy, logic dictates you will draw those energy before you deck out. You have to. Therefore, you will always draw into the energy and recycle two cards before you deck out. And if your opponent cannot KO the Bunnel Bee, and as long as you don't put something on your bench which your opponent can Lissandra into the active so that you cannot use Bunnel Bee, and that you then deck out, Bunnel Bee makes it impossible to ever actually deck out. Kind of like Uxy did back in the day. It literally makes it impossible to deck out. So Bunnel Bee is my number one Waylord counter. Now, there are other cards which I think can kind of come across Waylord. First of all, it's got a bad grass weakness. And this can be a problem against... Now, it's not a deck which is played a lot nowadays, but Verizian Genesect will absolutely destroy Waylord. Now, true, if Waylord constantly hits Team Flare Grunt and you never get two grass energy out, 
then you will lose, but they're never going to hit that many team flare grunts. Sooner or later, you'll get a um, an emerald slash and you'll end up getting set up and winning. And you will beat Waylord very, very quickly with Rizzi and Genesect. We've seen in the new set, there's a whole bunch of grass cards, including, for instance, Vesperquen, who does, for a double colorless energy, 20 damage plus 10 for each Pokemon in your discard pile. And again, you get a couple Vesperquen out and you will beat Waylord very, very quickly indeed. But the other thing you can do, and this is how Jason Glazinski won in the final of US Nationals, is just very careful play. In the game that Jason won, although he did win on time and had it been untimed, he probably would have lost. So far from a perfect plan, you get one Seismitoad, you just pile energy on, hopefully faster than your opponent can get rid of it, and you basically force them into using all of their energy getting rid of cards, and then hopefully you've still got enough energy to use. And then you're very, very careful about when you play your Verbank City Gym, when you play your Hypnotoxic Lasers to add damage, and you wear them down after they've used all of their AZ, after they've used all of their Cassius, when they've gotten rid of all the energy they can. Although, like I've said, Jason used this to get take five prizes, and in an untimed game, actually would have decked out. Now, the thing about Waylord is it's terrible in sudden death. It's, it basically can't win. You, they've got to deck you out before you take a single prize. And I think Waylord's a deck that's too easy to play around. One Bunnelby, and you'll probably beat Waylord. Any kind of grass Pokemon, and you'll probably beat Waylord. But Waylord is this kind of deck which comes around in a completely unprepared metagame, and I was not shocked to see it make the final of US Nationals. And under slightly different circumstances, it could have gone all the way. So, Waylord is a deck which I think it's at its heyday. I think it's going to be kind of like, you know, we've seen this with decks in the past... They come up and they do, you know, have McGoffertel a couple of years ago. It does quite well at Nationals, but by Worlds, everyone knows how to beat it. And it just doesn't even have a showing. So I don't think this is going to be a, a deck which is going to take over Worlds. I would expect to see it played by a few people at Worlds and not do terribly well. I think he's had his day in the sun. But oh my goodness, was it fun while it lasted. Now make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff to my YouTube channel, and of course, this is a whole new, I haven't done a video like this before, this isn't a PowerPoint, I made an actual video here, so give me some feedback, let me know if you like this kind of video or not, if you'd like these kind of things in the past, do you like these impromptu deck analyses as soon as we see an interesting new deck, would you rather wait for the podcast, do you like this kind of video, do you like the old kind of PowerPoints, would you like something else, give me a bit of feedback, hopefully you like this video, Hopefully you found it both interesting and entertaining. As always, I'll be back every Wednesday with my podcast, PTCG Radio, and about twice a week you can expect new videos on my lovely YouTube channel. So make sure you are subscribed to get all of them. Look after yourselves. My name's Ross, and you've been watching slash listening to PTCG Radio.